What do we got today? Ooh, yo, those portraits are so clean. Next. Oh, snap. That's dirty. Yo, how are they doing that? Moving on. Dude, it's just uh, it's not fair anymore. Is there like a tutorial on how to do this or what? Okay, we get it. You're a great photographer. Hold up. I know exactly who to call. They see me Freaking snow. Hello? Hey, what's up, bro? Oh, you know, just chilling. What's up? Hey, man, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I, I did research, like you always tell me on YouTube and stuff, mm -hmm. and everyone teaches like how to edit these kinds of photos, but no one actually shows ah, like. Ah, yeah, hold on. I, I think I know what you're talking about. Are you talking about, hang on, I think I can send something to you. Are you talking about something like this? Yeah, 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 that, that, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, all right, man. Yeah, I was just making sure that we were talking about the same thing. Uh, so the first thing you gotta do, man, is you need to get your hands on like a prism. I think you can get one on Amazon for like, I don't know, 20 bucks and some change or something like that. So it's really good. You just stick it in front of your lens, just start playing around with it. I mean, it really, it, it, it does the job, man. It's fantastic. Yeah, naturally you did. My got... boy. <laughs> yeah, so the next thing you gotta do is find yourself like a neon sign or like a glass or something you can just like lean up against. Um, don't ask me why it may look cheesy to some people, but it actually looks really good in photos I think it's because the prism is actually like reflecting off of the glass as well So it makes it kind of like blend because it's transparent. I don't know dude it, it, it just works So even though it may look cheesy when you're actually shooting out there It looks really cool in photos as you can tell. Yeah, I get you hold on But like how do you make it look so like cool? I guess like I've shot with prisms and like they don't they don't ever look like that. yeah Yeah, yeah, I, no, I get you so basically the reason why Dude, are you FaceTiming me in the bathroom? What? No, no, dude. I, I'm just chilling. What do you mean? Go ahead. Oh, uh, okay. I, I was just, I was just curious. Yeah. So the next thing is like, you really want to get like some dope props. Um, this is really where you can get extremely creative. Like th this is up to you, bro. Um, but in this case, for example, I mean, I, I use like some headphones. Um, those look really cool. Um, you always you can't go wrong glasses uh, Hoodies jackets anything that looks like pretty darn cool. I mean you should be pretty set, you know, like lollipops Yeah, lollipops. I, I saw this one time. I thought it was pretty cool uh, here. I'll send it to you real quick That is a very large lollipop <laughs> Yeah, large <laughs> Yeah, man, so in this case, we basically use like some headphones to really kind of make it look cool. Um, a couple things I've noticed that looks really good in these is like uh, strong eye contact looks really sick. Um, anytime you're reaching like your hand toward the lens, it kind of creates some depth whenever there is nothing to really get some uh, foreground on it. So that actually looks really cool for some reason. Yeah, I feel that. So uh, what were you shooting these on, by the way? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, so I'm shooting on a Sony a7 III. Um, pretty much anything that shoots well in low light is basically uh, what you could do. Um, if not, you can always bring in some portable lights uh, if you have any, uh, because whenever you start editing, you really can't push the ISO too hard because you really gotta stretch it out if you're going to be doing that whole like cyberpunk, you know, futuristic type of vibe, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, dude, did you see that video of that guy? He like shot with these like sick like tube light things like, oh dude, they, they look sick. <laughs> yeah, dude, no, dude, those those NAN lights, oh dude, those are so sick. Um, the Paybo tubes actually the 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 second version yeah so i have some of those that's those are actually the ones that i use on this shoot uh, so what i did in this one is i actually like set up a key light so at 5600 kelvin so i put one tube like on the side maybe about like 50 or 60 percent just to give it like a very clean key with like no colors on it and then I put another light, like a blue light on the side to give it as if there was like another neon sign. And then all the red that you see in that photo, it's all just coming from the neon sign. So I kind of wanted like a double neon sign. However, I don't have a neon sign. There's actually, if you actually saw where I was shooting, dude, there was like nothing on this side. So the blue light just kind of, you know, it just kind of fakes it, you know what I mean? Oh, okay, so so that's how you did it. Okay, so what, what'd you shoot, 35 millimeter? Yeah, <laughs> bro, you know I had to shoot in that 35 millimeter. Uh, I love that 1.4. You know, if you shot at F16 all the time, you wouldn't even have to worry about getting anything in focus. <laughs> 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 all right, facts. Yeah, I've seen that meme. It was all shot on the Sony a7 III f1.4, 35 millimeter. Uh, I wouldn't want to go any wider than 35 millimeters unless you're intentionally trying to like, you know, warp the image. 
um, because if you saw where I shot, there wasn't anything else interesting around me uh, except for that one spot. So if you shoot wider, there's like more that you have to cover up or there's or if there's there's more that you gotta hide. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I get you. So like the hardest part for me, man, is like the editing because when I'm editing, I like don't even like, like my edits don't look anywhere near as cool as yours. What are you doing that I'm not doing? Uh, yeah, dude. Okay, so that one's kind of hard, man, because like it's just all experience as far as like you and like how you edit and you know how far you can push your camera because you're shoot on, you shoot on that camera all the time. But um, if I was to say anything, I would say that like people mess with the shadows and the blacks like too much to try and expose the image and they're trying to edit them like they're normal pictures. And no, it's not that way, dude. Like it's gonna be dark. Like that's the whole, what, man, hold, hold up. Don't worry, bro. I got you. I got you. Hold on. Dude, Uncle Joe got you, man. You see, I like the VIP treatment. All right, hold on. Hang on. I'm going to turn you sideways, okay? This is official. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I know. All right, so this is all personal preference, and I know you've seen a whole bunch of, like, editing tutorials, so I'm not going to repeat what they said. If you want to go check them out, you can, but, like, I'm just going to say something that these people probably, like, haven't said. The biggest thing I've noticed when people start to edit these kind of dark photos, they begin to mess a lot more with the shadows and the blacks as if it was a regular picture, when in actuality, you should be exposing with the highlights and the whites. Let me explain. The dark areas of your image are what houses all of the noise in all of your images. If you have to remember anything, remember this, that shadows and blacks are like women. They're different creatures, bro. You gotta take care of them, be nice to them, be a little bit more gentle. You can't be throwing them around all over the place. Force. This is how they expose their images even though they're really dark. They bring up the highlights and the whites of the image. Remember that white is everywhere in the image, so that's really gonna help brighten it up without bringing in all the extra noise if you were to move the shadows and the blacks in an extreme way. This is what it looks like when you're exposing with the shadows and the blacks, and this is with the whites and the highlights. You may not notice a huge difference, but when you look at noise, it's very noticeable. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Make sure to add a vignette to these photos as well as turn up that highlight slider and that feather slider. Remember that that highlight slider, all that's going to do is allow the highlights that are in the corners of the image to just bleed through as opposed to it being just cut off like really sharply. Shout out to the mod fan. Uh, he taught me that one, bro. And one of the final touches that you can do is add some dehaze just to make it a little bit more foggy, add a little bit more atmosphere. You can always do this in Photoshop with like a smoke layer. I'll be honest, bro. I, I suck at Photoshop, so I ain't gonna go do none of that. I'm just gonna turn the slider. Yep, that, that's it, boy. Uh, also, make sure not to add a bunch of clarity. Uh, it looks tacky, bro. Like a little bit, yeah, that's cool, but just don't do it like crazy. Shouts amateur, like big time. Yeah, man, so uh, that's basically it. Wait, dude, are you? Okay, you, you look stressed. No, I'm fine. Why? Uh, okay, man. Um, yeah, dude. So, hey, uh, don't forget to subscribe to What's His Face because if he reaches Peter McKinnon the subscribers, he's going to make Peter his own personal photographer. I know. <laughs> Wild, right? Are you done? Dang. Okay, you're welcome. Bye. Gate. Okay. <laughs>